Am I biting off more than I can chew? Most definitely. Am I gonna mess up along the way? Most probably. But I'm actually pretty excited. Right, Burp? You excited? We're excited. <laughs> Today's goal is to be able to create my first ever custom vinyl toy. So what I'm trying to recreate when it comes to vinyl toys is a toy called Sofubi. In Japan, Sofubi are really well known as handmade toys that are also custom painted. The word Sofubi is for Japanese soft vinyl. I have two major inspirations. One is MP Goteron and my friend Candy Bolton. I'll leave their information in the description box below. And the reason I'm a little worried is because we're going to be using materials that was a hit and run, and now he's mocking me. Are you done? You know it's not true. I'm going to be using materials I've never used before. First starting with this Money or Mooney figurine. The next item I've never used other than the Crayola one that was for kids. So I'm going to be attempting making gradients and painting with an air compressor. I, I don't know. You know everyone loves you, right? Why you gotta steal my show? This air compressor is going to be the wild card of this video because I got it from AliExpress for only $30. That is really cheap for an air compressor considering most of them are about $100. Is it going to fail us? I don't know, but it is the wild card. <laughs> you heard me, don't say huh? <laughs> Did I stutter? No, I didn't. Bring your butt over here. <laughs> don't hit me. And of course, since we're going to be doing gradients and spray painting our figure, and so while I was in Japan, last time I picked up a bunch of acrylic paints that are made for the compressing sprayer thingamabob majigadig. Is that because I don't know the actual term? Bert, what are you even doing? I have no idea if these are the right kinds of paints for this project, and it's going to be a discovery for both you and I. Here are the colors I got. And so naturally, because I can't just pick up the primary colors in black and white, I picked up as many colors as I wanted to, because I love colors. So they range from our darker colors to our metallic colors. And of course I could... You can hear me very clearly, I know it. <laughs> and of course I can make them lighter or darker by blending them together. By the way, for those of you who haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click that subscribe button, little bell, and put all notifications on. Otherwise, I'm gonna wave a sharp pointy thing at you. Alright, so first things first is we need to know our enemy. Will it betray us and make us have to sand it because it is a very smooth surface? Or will it be cooperative and actually have things stick to it, which would be great. I didn't mention this, but I'm making this as a gift for a friend, so I don't want to ruin the box in case I can fit it back inside. So, how do, how do I open this? There it is. All right, here's, here's the first touch. Well, that is a really smooth surface. So my first impression with this toy is that it is pretty sturdy. The head moves, the arms move, which is really, really cute, which means we have to keep in mind when we're making our figure not to make the face too far in front. Otherwise the hand, oh, it can go all the way back. I'm pretty impressed. Do the, does, does the head and arm come off? Okay, so when we spray paint it, I can actually take it out and pop it back in. How about the head? No. Maybe I will not risk this. So the head does not come off. The other thing we have to keep in mind is that it does hold itself. But it's fragile. So it stands sideways, front a little wobbly. So if possible, I want to extend the body just a little more to make it more stable. Oh, by the way, the theme I want to take for this is going to be ocean themed. Because we're nearing the end of summer, let's just be a little more nostalgic. So as you can see from my drawing, it's pretty simple, so don't judge my drawing, is I really want to make a kind of monstery, but again, calm looking creature. So I'm going to go ahead and make a fish bone head, have a couple of the bones go from the top to the back, and then make a tail. This is a pretty rough sketch, so don't, don't judge it. I hate doing refined sketches. Sketches is just for this thing that I call a brain. For the extra bits and pieces, I'm going to be using Sculpey Original. I just love using Sculpey Clay. Not sponsored, not affiliated. It's just my preferred medium overall. And let's do a quick test to see whether or not it will stick on it on its own. The answer is yes, but I highly recommend that anytime you put Sculpey on any kind of surface, to use a liquid clay 
It'll make it bond even better. So they will become friends ever and ever. Walk down some beautiful grass and a green meadow. Did I say green twice? By the way, for those of you who are new, we do not, we do not do cute on this channel. I mean, look at my face. It has nothing to do with cute things. We do monsters and creatures of darkness. All right, so here we go. I am really near. Oh my god, oh no. No, Liquid Scopey, why have you betrayed me? Why have you betrayed me? All right, so my guess is that this bottle is probably too old or because it's supposed to be clear, it's too liquidy. So I'm gonna stick to the pearl one because that one is a lot thicker and we like them thick here. <laughs> All right, so let's, here's the difference. There you go, that's where it should be. For those of you wondering, can we bake this little thing? And the answer is, I don't know. I have no clue, but I'm assuming yes, because the only way to get polymer clay hard is to shove it in the oven. So this little fella is gonna be experimented on. So we've hit our first roadblock and it was way earlier than I expected. Normally I use these little glass things to make the eyes, but fish normally have pretty big eyes. Once I start covering this, it's just going to disappear in the clay, which means I'm going to have to make my own little flat back cabochons. So I'm going to have to take out the resin, which if you don't know, is kind of like a, once it hardens, it's like a plasticky glass and make half domes in here and then create new eyes. That's where I'm at now. And in order to harden it, we can leave it in the sun for about half an hour or under this cool little UV light for about a minute. One minute, 37 seconds later. All right, moment of truth. It seems pretty hardened. It's really hot. Careful. And make it. And, ooh, is that hardened? That is pretty neat. I don't know how it's going to look with a drawing. It might be a little too domey. One way to find out. Now to get the eyes ready, what I'm going to be doing is taking it upside down, putting it on a piece of clay, and then coloring it in with some paints. Normally at this point, I use some iridescent nail polish because we love our things shiny. But instead of doing that, I'm going to use the liquid acrylic that I just got from Japan. Hopefully they're shiny enough. Question of the day, do I regret using those acrylic inks as opposed to using paint? The answer is 100% yes. These things take forever to dry. <coughs> oh, the salt, the salt is coming out and I'm starting to lose patience. I've been doing this for the last 40 minutes. Usually it doesn't take me more than 10. I just want to see whether or not the technique with those acrylic inks work or whether I should go buy new nail polish because I lost my other one. So, fingers crossed. Yeah, that looks like an absolute mess. Time to start over. Which means that these eyes go straight in the trash. All right, so here we go, moment of truth. I swear, if this time it doesn't work, I'm gonna go flip a table. And yes. Okay, I am really happy with this. Please, other eye be good. Yes. Okay, if you look, fish eyes are not very round. There's a little bubble, but that's okay. It's going to add to the charm of underwatery. And you can see the iridescent, iridescenty of the actual nail polish is really useful when making eyes. So I definitely recommend it. All right, so I can say they look great, but we have to, we have to test it out. And yes, that does look fishy. And I don't mean suspicious, unless it's trying to work against me, but it's lying to me that it's fishy. So what I'm going to do is push it inwards, but remember, fish eyes do stick out, so I don't want it to be even with the actual body. Now at this point, the only thing I really need to do is define the features of the fish that I want. I want to make the mouth kind of droopy and I I'm going to try and make it smile, but that's going to be a little challenging with a fish. By the way, in case you're wondering, this little mesh thing, I got, it was wrapped around my garlic, so I'm just using it for scale texture. You don't have to press too hard. And I'm going to be turning the ears into fins. I contemplated whether or not I wanted fish bones sticking in the back like my initial drawing, but I think I'm going to kind of let go of that idea. I think I was being a little too ambitious. So instead, I'm using some molds that have different seashells and starfish and placing them randomly around the body. And of course, we can't have a fish without our little fishy tail. Also, because, you know, 
if we don't if we don't put a tail, it's just going to fall forward. We need to make sure that this little dude does not keep falling forward. Balance is what you need in life. Ermie. Good. So far, I absolutely love it. I know we need to clean it up, but don't worry about that for now. For now, I need you, Grains, to think of a name for this critter. I really hope that you have some interesting names, puns, get extra bonus points. If you have a pun, here's a gold star for you. Wow. You may have it. So far, the body seems just a little less oceany, and I really want it to be ocean-like. That's because art is all about experimenting. And that's because art is all about trying new things. Don't be afraid to try arty things. It's all about relaxation. <coughs> oh, salt is coming up. Is that anticipation that this mold won't work? I guess we'll see. All right, so let's squeeze a little bit of that clay. I hope it's not going to stick inside, but fingers crossed. Remove the excess. And we should, oh. Okay, so this is, yeah, we're gonna have to take precautions against this. I'm gonna go get some cornstarch. Some of you might be asking, But Jackie, why do we need cornstarch for? And that's because when we use cornstarch in molds, it makes the clay come out a lot more easily. Let me demonstrate my little grains. So let's say I want this starfish again. Dab a little of that. Probably shouldn't have put as much as I did, but close enough. And now we shove it back in there. And in all theory, it shouldn't stick. Will I mess up? I guess that's something for both, both of us to find out. All right, time to remove the excess. So far, so good. It wants to come out already. And it should, in all theory, yo, pop out <laughs> a lot more easily. So we have our first starfish. Let's make a couple of the other shapes. Alright, time to make our little fish dude a little more oceany by putting some corals right on top. I've made so many coral type tutorials in the past, so these are very old school nerdy crafter. I'll definitely link them below if you're interested. Oh my god, is that a stray glitter? Oh my god. Come on, come on buddy, come on buddy. to get a lot of fingerprints on your pieces, use some rubbing alcohol. I get these at the pharmacy. So the higher percentage, usually the better. Stay away from 100 though. Just to be on the safe side of things, I decided maybe it would be a good idea to make the feet just a little bigger. With the feet added, I have to admit, it kind of looks like a monkey from the ocean. But hey, it's going to be stable. And you know what? Sea monkeys are water creatures, right? I don't even know what sea monkeys are. Oh, that does not look like a sea monkey. Let's just pretend it looks like a sea monkey how you would think about it in your head, but not what it actually looks like. Those are some weird creatures. <gasps> All right, now we're going to put it in to bake. Will it melt? I don't know. Will it be destroyed after two days of work? I'm not sure. But the only thing that we have left to do is put our hands together and pray to the baking gods. Dear baking gods of evermore, Please protect my piece from cracks, burns, and fallen limbs. And also, stop breaking my stuff! Our piece has been baked. The plastic has not melted. There was a little bit of resistance when I wanted to move the arms, but they're still articulate. But as predicted, the baking gods are not very forgiving. I probably didn't yell loud enough. Because as you can see, the tail started to separate and it created a crack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break it and I'm gonna glue it back on so that it's in the right position. And now for the moment I've been fearing. You'll go over there, little buddy. Using an air compressor, well, airbrush thing. That's what it is. Well, English number one. All right, so let's, let's find out if this $30 airbrush thing actually works. And I think if it doesn't work, my 
Plan B is going to be using the one from Crayola. I actually kept it. I, I said it was not bad, so I kept it. All right, so for $30, ooh, it looks good. Let's put it together. All right, here's the airbrush. It was pretty easy to put together. It was pretty straightforward. Now we're going to... Well, thank you AliExpress for sending me items I don't have plugs for. Luckily, I carry converters. So give me a second. Five minutes later. All right, so here we go. Look at this very convenient three times over plug. Thank you for even writing that in a description. All right, moment of truth. It is plugged in. Oh, oh yeah. One other thing that you guys should know if you do order this, the plug cable is really short, so hopefully it doesn't come apart. All right, how does it sound? Oh, what happened? It has power. Okay, so as long as I keep my finger on here, the compressor keeps working. When I stop, it just stops. That's really cool. All right, let's test it out on a piece of cardboard. All right, so since I want this to be an ocean type theme, I think I'm going to go with these three colors over here. So gold for the sand, blue for the ocean, and then dark blue for like the deeper ocean. I know it's very deep. I'm Nerdy Crafter here. We are very philosophical. So I'm going to practice with the gold because I don't want to mess the inside and then have to clean it and I have no... Okay, I think that's okay. I'm gonna put a couple of drops of the gold. If any of you have you ever used this, let me know. I am really nervous. I've always wanted to do real airbrushing, but never did. Now I understand why these things have droppers. I'll put two drops. We'll put, let's, let's, let's go crazy. Let's put three, four drops. What the heck? I'm so nervous. <laughs> Watch me spill everything. I should probably close this, right? So now let's see how, how far does four drop go? How far do four drops go? Let's, let's do it. Nothing's coming out. All right, let me troubleshoot and figure out what's going on because this needs to spray. All right, so I've been spraying for the last 10 minutes and then suddenly it's like, I wanna work now. So let's, let's see it again. Hopefully this time it won't betray me. And it has betrayed me. All right, so for those of you who are saying, but Jackie, you're doing it wrong. You're absolutely right. I am doing it wrong. I'm gonna go get some spray paint. Spray paint the whole thing in white first, and then work work, work my way with the airbrush. Because I think the color's too dark. I don't I don't know anything about airbrush. I probably should have watched tutorials. So I called my brother, and according to him, in order to be able to get it out, it's quite possible I might have needed acrylic thinner. So let's do that. Alright, let's test it out on this thing. All right, it works. It's very weak, but it works. All right, moment of truth. This is, this is it now. We're, we're committing to doing this, if it works. And off we go. Yes, it's pretty thin, but at least we have something going. Let's keep doing the do it. of working, I think I may have captured the essence of a Sofubi or custom toy. This was my first time using acrylic inks, an airbrush, and a vinyl toy. I really love the way it turned out, especially around the top part of that fin where it looks like an island, where the water looks very pale at the beginning and then it gets darker and darker. And definitely the corals around the head give it a little bit more of that kind of mystic type feel to it. Even though it was my first time doing an airbrush, I have to say I, I want to airbrush everything. Like, maybe I should go back and revisit some of my old sculptures. Maybe I'll do that. 
Let me know what you think, and if I did do something completely wrong, and I'm gonna only find out later on, you grains are smarter than I am, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, my little grains. If you want to watch another crafty video, make sure you check up here, and if you want to watch a salty video of destruction, make sure you check it out down here. Until then, I will see you in the next video.